No, legal, legal, but not too legal. Let's say that this one actually is, is, is not is not about licenses. For once, it's not about licenses. Uh, or a little bit, a little bit. We can't avoid that. Um, do you want me to kind of like present what we're going to do, Andrew, and then you take over? Or um, yeah, well that, that that would be great. If you want to, um, I, I was going to try to do everything I possibly could to avoid having to pronounce uh, San Fio de Hill Bridge, <laughs> <laughs> but okay, I've just tried to pronounce it. So I, I will let you. Okay. Yeah, give us a little background about that. I'll I talk about Croydon. Okay, yeah, okay, okay, yeah. So 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 what what we're talking about actually is is managing um, governance and issues and sustainability in open source uh, projects which are run or initiated by the public administration. And um, I think most of us know about how it's run in the private sector or by individuals in universities. Um, the public sector has has some issues um, which make it a little bit more complex. Uh, it makes it more exciting because I think there's a there's a greater achievement to be done there. But um, the public sector does have rules about how they can operate and how they can work. And these vary from country to country, which is why it's interesting to contrast um, my experience in Spain and Andrew's experience in um, in the UK. Um, just to say, we are both lawyers. We're both, uh, I would say, open source lawyers. We've been working in this sector now for way too long, as you can see. Um, but um, and um, but it's it's uh, one of my. I, I like working with open source because it's it's enjoyable, it's challenging, uh, and there's always new things to do. And at the moment, I think public sector uh, open source is is one of the really uh, areas where things are happening and things can can happen better if we can achieve um, greater ways of freeing and using open source, public open source, and, and achieving sustainability in, their, um, in these projects. So basically, the presentation today is about uh, two projects um, working on, uh, well, actually, I've got two, so it's three. It's, it's two on my side, one on Andy's side, uh, looking at how um, open source was approached by our um, respective clients in this respect, um, two cities. Uh, why it's, this is why it's a tale of two cities. <coughs> uh, San Filiu de Llobregat, I got that one right, uh, on my side, and, and Croydon on uh, for Andy. Okay, so just, just very briefly, uh, San Filiu is a suburb of Barcelona where I live. Uh, Barcelona is obviously very open source. It's got a loads, loads of projects. It's got an open technologies uh, plan. It's got loads of stuff. And um, the, the cities around Barcelona are actually working in this ecosystem and, and building stuff and sharing things. Um, it's also part of the province. The province has a regional government with a smart region initiative, uh, which is fully open based. The, 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 the people working on the smart region uh, are very much in favor of open source. So. We're in a context where actually, which is quite positive. It's a small town, um, not very many people, probably about 50,000 people in, 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 in inhabitants. Um, the, the, the IT department is very small, there are eight people working working there. Um, but as I said, they're, they're working towards this open administration. And, and in Spain, at least in Catalonia, open administration means digital, uh, open, openly digital, digitally open. Um, and, and I will be presenting a couple of projects we're working with to free uh, the software and create some community around these projects. Over to you, Andrew. Yeah, great, thanks. Um, so if you ask uh, people from Croydon about Croydon, they will say that Croydon um, is a small town in Surrey. Um, if you actually uh, look at reality, it's actually quite a large um, town that is really part of Greater London. It's, it's in Greater London. And the council is actually quite a large council. Um, it's unfortunately just become bankrupt. But anyway, that's another story that doesn't impinge on this particular tale at all. And it's got quite a, quite a large IT department in the council. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more later about how this project actually developed. Uh, but they do quite a lot of their own internal development mm -hmm. and particularly web development. So the, the, the story that we're going to be talking about is really you know how they've, they've looked at that web development and decided that they can uh, try to share code with some of the other councils um, yeah and there's now a total of about 10, 10 councils involved in this project okay and that's actually one of the key differences because um, most uh, Spanish at least the ones I know um, uh, IT departments in public sector are very very uh, few people and they outsource and they subcontract nearly all the IT development um, so this is basically for labor reasons for finance budgeting mm -hmm. Croydon going bust uh, San Filio is not quite but going bust yet but um, it could be happening okay so let's let's have a look at I'll explain uh, the projects I'm looking at and then Andy will explain his and we'll come together again um, explaining a little bit uh, what we think um, the issues are what the challenges are what some good practices are Okay, so in our um, in San Filio, there's really two projects, totally different. 
Um, GD Matrix is a really fairly old project. It started in 2011. It's very mature. It's gone through various cycles. It's been built um, uh, for some Filiu uh, under several public contracts. Um, it's very complex. It's a case management uh, information flow software for managing, uh, you know, public files cases in in the public administration. So it's it's a, one of the core elements of their infrastructure. Um, and it has obviously a you know, public facing interface so people can upload their own files, whatever, with auth authenticity and all that type of thing. So it's quite complex. Um, it's, uh, as I said, it was built uh, from 2011 onwards, so quite, you know, 10 years old now. Um, and I wouldn't, I wouldn't care to say how many lines of code. What's important is how it was built. So it actually built under public bid uh, by a private company, as I said, and it's actually been the same company over the years. Um, they've they've had new bids. They've had different people try to come in and uh, work with the code and, and be the supplier. But in the end, the same company's managed, probably due to its um, advantage in knowing the code uh, and, and cost savings, to stay there. So that's been uh, good in terms of continuity. Uh, bad in terms of of spreading the news and spreading the the knowledge about this code. Okay, so it's very centralized. Um, it's managed by one project manager in 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 the um, in in the, in the uh, municipality, um, and it was built as code for the for the uh, for, for for San Filio. Okay, so it's, it wasn't actually kind of built to be freed uh, as as some projects as the next project is about so it, was, it wasn't necessarily built in an open source manner with open source methodologies and modular and and uh, you know iterative and in, in, in a more agile way so it's more monolithic um old old style but freeable that's one of the issues we had to look at was do the ip clearance and and to see who owns the code and and how but because this has been managed quite strictly in fact it was not too difficult Brain for IT is a totally different project, totally different stage. It's about a year old. Uh, it's the brainchild of a single member of the IT department, the project manager, uh, who did it uh, as, as a separate independent project, working on AI, which this is about a year and a half ago, you know, so the fashion these days, and looking at AI and how that can be uh, used as a framework for doing, for supporting certain municipal services. Uh, so it's fresh, new. It was built to be opened because this is the the project manager who is leading sponsoring the concept of doing open source at, at San Filio. Uh, and so it's built uh, on GitHub, um, actually closed GitHub for the beginning because he's a, a public sector official. So he you know, doesn't, he can't open up the code until he's authorized to do so. Um, but it was built to be open, um, which changes enormously uh, how it's built from a technical point of view, uh, the infrastructure where it's built, because uh, basically open, freeing it would basically be putting a license on and, and clicking GitHub to make it an open uh, repository, whereas the other one needs a huge amount of grooming. Okay, turn the page and let, let's see what happens. So as I said, this is um, totally two different stories of where the, how the code got to this situation that we want to free it. Okay, um, the mandate is actually a really good mandate because both the political people in the council are in favour of this, the technical people are in favour, um, even the legal department's in favour, which is which is always very positive. So everybody's behind this, um, and uh, but we had to look at it from two very different perspectives. Um, the one interesting thing about GD Matrix is that it had already been shared with other municipalities under you know kind of public to public um, agreements. Uh, private you know, internal agreements, let's say, um, where we say we will share the code with you uh, and for free because that's what the law says we must do. Uh, but there's no open source community feeling about it. So there's no key pro quo, your contributions, my contributions, centralized management, single backlog, prioritization of issues, nothing of that sort. It's just we have this code. If you want to use it, you can borrow it, and here it is. You can use it. Okay, so that there wasn't, there is a beginning of a community there because we have seven or eight, I think it's Mona, um, cities which are using this code, uh, but just not in any collaborative manner. Um, uh, well, specifically open source collaborative manner. Okay, so that's something. Brave for IT hasn't been shared with anybody. It's just an in-house seed of a project, um, and that that one I, I think is going to be much much easier, and we're going to be get some traction um, quite quickly on that. So, so the, the mission I was uh, came in on is one. IP clearance, make sure that we have the IP rights to be able to free this you know, old code where it comes from and this new code and who owns it. That was the easy bit in, in, in legal terms. But the second half was, and how do we free it 
I, I would say properly, but but at least um, in a manner that we can guarantee or get the benefits of open source and not just have to throw more money, more money, more money at the code from us as owners of the code and just hope that somewhere out there someone will use it and maybe give us something back. Okay, so it's concept of building community, um, but a little bit top down because the, the code's there, it's been seeded, it's been put out there. We've got some collaborators, but we, have, we haven't really built any community dynamics. Okay, so it's quite difficult to, to kick start or cold start community dynamics when we don't really have those um, community dynamics yet. Okay, Andy, do you want to go um, next? Okay, so so the issues are here, and this is where I'm stopping handing over to issues. Is is the the status of what what we looked at? Okay, so we had two different projects. We we need to look at them both in a very different manner. So there's no one size fits all. That's that's an important first learning. Um, well, everybody agreed that we don't need to set up a foundation and an institute, a public body. I mean, not another public body, please. Um, uh, there are loads of umbrella organizations like the, the region uh, government. Uh, there are inter-administrative uh, IT um, support bodies which help as well. So there's, there's, there's actually an entity set up here in Catalonia whose mission is to provide IT support and centralize IT uh, digital transformation for the small municipalities who cannot afford it. Okay, so there's loads. Of, if we needed in a body, that we, there, it could be there. But in the end, we said, well, we're doing this ourselves at the moment, so let's do it ourselves and see how we can go there. So, so no, nobody, okay, no, 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 okay. On the IP front, um, once we've done the clearance, um, it was important to say, keep it simple, keep it clean. Let's not have complications with special agreements with special parties. And this is your code, my code. No, let's really try and adopt an open source uh, uh, method here, where with a, like a, a part of a, what's called a social contract is that if you're going to contribute, you contribute under this license. Um, uh, you, can, you know, you the other cities retain ownership uh, and the right IP rights, but you use the like the, the the project license. Okay, and um, I think the final point is 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 goes together is the management and the sustainability. Is um, yeah, although the public sector is it may may not seem to be very much an economic entity because they've got money, public money. In, in fact, they are. They, they are very, very um, close to their money because they have very little amounts of money. <laughs> At least in, in Spain, we have very little amounts of money in the public sector. And it has to be very, very carefully uh, managed that um, there is an, uh, there, there's a, a value for money type of deal in going open source, is that we get more out of this that we'll, than we're going to have to put in. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so how can we set up so that we've got this win-win for everybody. You know, the, 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 the San Filus obviously had put the most in at the moment because they had invested in the building. So uh, for everybody else, it was a, it was a, an easy one. You know, we've got code, thanks very much. You know, uh, open source code, we can use it. The important thing is getting a dynamic so that actually those people give back and, and, and the costs are shared, okay, um, in, 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 in the evolution. And that, that was very important in, in terms of the political decision. Of, yes, we go open source. It's not going to be a burden for us. It's going to be a win. And how do we set up the structures for the win? Okay, so that, that's, that was basically the, 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 the challenge is, is from these old projects. Well, the, the, I think the young project is going to be very easy. I think, sorry. Historically, everything got a stop because on the 20th of February last year, uh, we had COVID in Spain, we had lockdown, so nothing really happened after that. And all the IT departments got really busy um, setting up people from home. Okay, so uh, these had a one year of freeze since the last thing. Okay, so that's where we are. Um, and over to you, Andrew, just to compare how what happened in, in Croydon. Yeah, super. Um, okay, so this is uh, just some of the councils that are involved. Um, let's say there's, we're up to about uh, 10 councils in total, but it's primarily being driven by um, Croydon and, and Brighton, um, and then Bracknell Forest and, and Oxford are also involved, and then there's other councils involved um, further along, along the line. Um, and also a couple of agencies in there, DXW and um, Agile Collective, um, who are sort of both helping on the technical side of things. So how did this start? Uh, well, there was a 75 um, thousand pound um, local government award um, which was available to councils that wanted to try to do innovative things um, in digital and this was applied for 
uh, towards the end of 2019. Um, and then in 2020, um, Croydon and uh, three other councils um, won the award and they started this project. And the first thing to do is really, they wanted to work out how to share code uh, for their websites and they're all using Drupal. So, um, you know, this seemed to be a, a sort of pretty simple, sort of lightweight proof of concept to see how, how uh, this might work. So they went into a discovery phase asking other councils what they were doing um, and trying to find out uh, the differences between the councils, what particular characteristics um, they had, what their approaches might be, um, you know, what their blockers are. And we'll talk about those um, a little bit later. And then as a result of that, they decided to form a coding club um, and it was really all about sharing code what they didn't want to do is to set up an organization that was going to provide you know local government website services um, as a service um, it was it was very much at the, at the developer end of things trying to work out how to share code to make everything operate more efficiently um, and they basically as you know in parallel with uh, some of the criteria that Malcolm was talking about they really wanted it to be as lightweight um, and simple as possible. Uh, so first of all, they went into um, a discovery phase, um, and this is an example of remember the days when people used to sit around tables and talk to each other well we managed that for about two weeks before we got locked down uh but then because we were operating in a sort of agile type fashion anyway most of these people are developers so they're used to operating in an agile fashion um and actually from my personal perspective it's the first time that i've been embedded in a in a team that was being managed in an agile fashion and, and i it was a real eye, eye opener uh, and the timing couldn't have been better because when we went into lockdown you know we transferred a, a lot of that sort of activity th uh, using tools like slack for example um into the way that we run our business as well anyway that's a that's a, that's another story um so um uh, and um, as a result of the the, the uh, discovery phase um you know we we uh, uh, really went through these these um uh, we we discovered these these uh, particular characteristics i'm not going to go into them um in in detail uh, but obviously you know councils have a lot of things in common they continuously want to improve their 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 websites and and um, even though councils can vary very differently in terms of the size and the sort of populations they serve some of them may be in the countryside some of them may be um, in urban areas uh, there's still a lot of things that they have to do that, that are in common so it seems like a sort of a natural fit for some sort of um, um, some sort of sharing uh, but part of the issue is that um, at different levels within the council um, uh, so different levels of management management doesn't necessarily quite get you know how code sharing might operate they don't understand open source they don't understand agile methodology um, in the same way as you know all the people that I was talking to and one of the one of the, the things that I found really heartening was that I mean you know these developers they really understand agile they understand open source um, they understand uh, the licensing um, behind it um, and they realize that and we'll talk about this a little bit later um, one of the challenges is really trying to sell these ideas to management further up um, within the, the council so that they can they can uh, you know people at all levels can can buy into the idea um, but you know fundamentally this was intended to be a proof of concept and if it works the idea and it has worked um, and then the idea is to expand this into into different areas as well so uh, in common with what malcolm was saying we decided there was no need for a formal incorporated body of, of any sort uh, we thought we'd agree on on a very lightweight documentation so we have a memorandum of understanding which is it's only four pages long uh, we appreciate that licensing models are complicated and we're not going to talk about licensing now. Uh, in this particular case, we just decided to go for GPL because Drupal is GPL and everything you plug into Drupal, Drupal is probably going to be GPL as well. So, you know, don't think about it too hard. Just go for GPL. And it needs to be, an, the concept needs to be easy to sell within the hierarchy of the council. It needs to be easy to sell to the management. Um, so, um, I mean, the, the advantages which were sort of obvious to us and maybe not quite so, so obvious to management um, were things like, you know, we're not reinventing the wheel. Um, so there's uh, so so a piece of code can be reused everywhere. That's really the, uh, the, the the fundamental point behind this. But it means that once this code has been shared, there's less lock in because you're not tied to uh, one particular proprietary provider of, of a platform. Um, but we figured out that it's still possible for a commercial ecosystem to develop 
develop. I mean, you have councils like Croydon who have the in-house capability uh, to be able to uh, develop their own uh, code. Um, but then you ha you have other councils, and these are some of the other councils sort of uh, that are joining now. You know, who are much smaller, who maybe only have a you know couple of people in their tech department, um, and who aren't able to do that. So they're really going to want to. Um, outsource, but not necessarily to an organization that um, is just providing a one-stop service. They want to take advantage of the cost savings, et cetera, that you get here as well. So we, we believe that this sort of ecosystem will develop in the future. And certainly the developers like working in open source software. They like agile me methodologies. Um, they like the community, et cetera, et cetera. So that was a positive for us as well. Um, we've got some figures on cost saving, which if we've got time, I'll, I'll share with you. But you know, we, there's a perception in, in cost saving. The reason there's an exclamation mark is that uh, you know, a lot of people are trying to say um, open source isn't about cost saving. It's more about other advantages as well. But um, for councils where you're talking about <laughs> public money, you know, cost saving is important. <laughs> And um, speed of deployment, you know, you can you can roll that out quickly as well. Uh, Malcolm, I don't know whether you know your your um, your your discussions that you had with your projects had a, had a sort of similar list. Yeah. Um, Sorry. Great. Sorry, did yeah. you ask something? Uh, yeah, sure. And I was I was just wondering whether whether those um, sort of perceived advantages were similar to yes. the advantages that you perceived as well. Very much so. Except that don't forget that in our in our case. Um, we had very few developers because the developers are all outsourced. So the people who are managing this actually were the project managers, uh, who are the you know and systems of systems admin, um, who are in the in the um, uh, administration and and then the the political levels and, and the legal department. So it was a very much more top down approach in in that sense. And mm -hmm. the, the actual people to building it, the the the, the developers w w were not so keen because they were coming from a private company and they had this specific leverage they had for their code. But the code was owned by the by the um, uh, public administration, so they had no say in that in, in that in that matter. Um, mm -hmm. But 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 yes, the the the, the those arguments, the less lock in, the cost savings, uh, were all seen as as big arguments in favour of, of of freeing this and building the community. Yes. Yeah, great. Um, and um, you know, and we were concerned there were some poss possible problems as as well. And I'm not going to go into these in depth, but um, you know, there is a perception that um, that open source software um, isn't necessarily as turnkey ready as proprietary software is, uh, and also because you're not necessarily dealing with a commercial organisation, um, it means that you you know the legal department gets a bit uncomfortable about it. So possible blockers are what the legal department's going to say, what management is going to say. Um, so he's trying to present everything in a way. Um, that, that basically said this is going to be as low friction as possible. Um, it's just a proof of concept at the moment. If it doesn't work, it's not going to be a big. You will just have learned something, but it's it's not. We've not committed ourselves to something huge. And I think that was something that made it a lot easier um, for for, for organisations to, 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 to other councils to get involved as well. Yeah, yeah. I, I I I hear the pain. In fact, in one of these, when it's the perception that you have to do more yourself. Um, because um, obviously the, the 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 council that was just running its own software passes from running its own software and managing an open source community, um, yeah. and because obviously the the, the, the council was going to be the leader of, at least for the first stage uh, of the community, uh, committing resources to, to building the community, and and uh, they they said, well, we've hardly got the bandwidth today to run our systems. <laughs> How are we going to find the time and the money and the staff? And the skills, because obviously running a community is very different from running an open source, uh, running a project, you know, mm -hmm. a public public sector project. So, so that was probably one of the biggest tasks. Is he saying, well, how can we do this so that um, we we get time uh, freed up so that we can actually build community, run some events, do some mailings, do everything else that that happens in a community. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Okay. So looking at governance here. Um, the the so so this, this is a, as I say a work in progress because things will, will put a little bit on hold, um, similar a little bit to the MOU that uh, member of understanding yeah that that uh, Andy mm -hmm. mentioned, um, what what the, the Spanish public system works on the basis of agreements and and, and, and formal documents and this is something that uh, if if you want to dedicate staff resources money to a project there has to be some form of cover legal contractual administrative cover for this a project that's set up for this okay um if you want to collaborate although the law actually says you don't have need to have an agreement the way they've collaborated for the last 150 years is through agreements so um just just getting this through the legal department was easier if we said you know let's do an umbrella agreement very much in line with andy's mou but much more detailed because it's 
public sector, you've got three or four lawyers looking at it, and they all want to add in their own little bit of, of redlining. Okay, but the 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 content of this, which is a draft, it's on the table and being discussed, is is what Andrew's probably going to mention actually in, in his um, MOU is question of who we are, what we're doing, um, how to join this, how to join the boat, how to come and leave, what commitments can be made. Um, and and we can talk a little bit bit more about that if there's a binding commitment to say well if you're joining look put up five thousand you know euros um, and that goes into a pool and that money will be used for the the backlog and and the, the top priorities in the next iteration of the project um, at the moment it's easier to sign a, a, an administrative agreement if there's no money involved so at the moment there's nothing there's no provision for, for economics um, uh, but there is provision which is more important for governance to see how that works. Okay, so setting up some committees uh, in terms of who the, who's the project owner, uh, user committee, technical committee, um, it, it gets heavyweight. Uh, if anybody looking at it, you seem to be jump starting a tiny project to something like Apache, <laughs> Apache Castle. Yeah. But that's the way the public administration works here, and they they understand committees. They can actually work with committees. They have minutes. Things happen once you've got the minutes and the agenda and everything. Um, I don't think the projects we're working in would work on on how Andy's this kind of like informal code sharing is not in the culture of the administration it's in the culture of the of the developers who are actually doing it but it's not in the culture of the the people who are pushing a little bit more top down this project okay and then the other thing is setting up the community tools so github offers a lot but there's more than that so so identifying what what's the community dynamics and and how to get people on board for that um, that was important. And brain 4 t is very much uh, very, very simple mapping a, pr a private sector project. Just put it on GitHub. Let's get some talks. Let's have some jam sessions, hack fest, a meetup or whatever. Um, there's no urgent priority uh, to get that working. Well, there is now, but in terms of technology. But um, So the, the more important, I think more interesting is, is, is the other one, is the GD matrix and how that was looked at. How does that compare with you, Andy? Um, yeah, I think um, it's really in, in terms of the um, ability for these um, organizations to be able to operate on an informal basis. Um, and as you said, we had some memorandum of understanding. This is only four pages long, and there's a link to it if you want to have a look at it later. Um, but um, there's a list here of the sort of the headings that, that, that we covered. Uh, the most important um, words in the whole thing are at the bottom in red, this agreement is non-binding. <laughs> so that basically gave people an excuse not to show this thing to their legal department. Departments, which uh, so there's a sort of culture of uh, sort of um, you know ask for forgiveness rather than permission. Just go ahead and do something, and then uh, and then if you if somebody tells you off, then you say I'm sorry. I realise I shouldn't have done that. Uh, so th this was the, the idea was that uh, uh, this this really was the sort of most most lightweight um, possible uh, way of, of of arranging this relationship. Um, and so the the, the final, um, I'm not going to go through these categories, the last one uh, is finance. I mean, there's nothing in there about finance. Nobody has to make any financial commitment. And as soon as you've got a situation where you don't have to have any budget sign off, then suddenly it becomes a lot more straightforward. Um, so it was sort of semi done under the radar. Um, and uh, the more successful the project became, the more that people admitted that they were actually being involved in it. So it was based on a set of values. This is actually part of the MOU, but it's also based on some Something called the local digital declaration, uh, which is um, something that has been uh, that a lot of um, local authorities and, and um, other government entities have signed up to, and it, it, it's it's very much a, a sort of open source methodology list of list of the sort of values that that you would um, apply. Um, and some um, you know people said very nice things about the memorandum of understanding. Um, so where are we with this now? Um, well, it was deployed in December. Um, we reckon that um, all of the councils involved on an average of five microsites are going to save something like, you know, £117,000 um, for the development costs, that's €133,000. So across England, you know, we could save millions of pounds really by using, using this sort of structure. Um, and uh, and this is an example of the just one of one of the websites that's using it at the moment. So the sort of thing that you need to do if you interact with your council, you need to pay for things. Um, you you know like uh, you might have to pay your taxes. Um, you might have to find things like where you can find a recycling bank or where you can find a library or something. Uh, you might have to apply for various permits and things. And then if there are problems like potholes in the road, you need a, me a mechanism for um, for reporting them. 
Um, so I'm very conscious that we're <laughs> running very, very short of time here. Um, so Malcolm, I don't know if there's anything you want to sort of talk about. Yeah, um, one final point. Final, final point because I think we've only got we've only got a couple of minutes. Um, I think I think there's been a, there's a major difference between what you've you've talked about and what I've talked about in terms of you're very much bottom up, build a team, uh, and and as you say, ask ask for forgiveness. Um, mine's top down because it's been driven from the top. Uh, and in fact, I, I have you know, kind of, it's a pity that we couldn't also do both and, and get the developers together and have some, you know, pizza parties and, and, and get people interested through yeah. the bottom. I, I think that would have definitely the route next time. Um, I think the pros and cons of both, but both, both methods. Um, and and as, as is from our side, I think the the, the, the formal justification of of getting uh, freeing this is 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 important. That's why I think we formalised it a bit more than what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah, um, uh, but again, it's, it's embedded in, in our culture here, uh, and that's, that'll be very different in France, Germany, Italy, whatever I imagine. So, and 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 regionally. So, and the other thing is, we do have the benefit of Barcelona. I mean, Barcelona is really a driving f force for open source mm -hmm. in in the area, and 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 having a big sister do, doing all that, it's it's fantastic because it's a me too type thing. Well, the, the positive me too. Um, yeah, exactly. of, yeah. of, uh, thanks. Anyway, that, that's I think the final comment is is and and if there is a leader, let, let's follow the way and 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 take advantage of, of those you know, piggybacking a little on that. Yeah, exactly. Um, Excellent, and there's some links, um, and we also have a nice mission patch as well. This is for the beta plan, so. <laughs> okay, I'll be recommend I'll be recommending your Drupal for for uh, for San Filiu as well. We can be a member yeah, of your community. You have to have a Catalan version. Yeah, definitely. Right, fantastic. Okay. I think Do we that's have time it. for any questions. I don't know how we get questions, yeah. Mike. Yeah, hi there. Um, thank you for that. That was uh, wonderful. Um, some really interesting points up there. Um, so we have had a lot of people in the chat um, talking. It seems like you've uh, sparked some good discussion there. And um, I have a question, um, which is, are the memorand memorandums of understandings public and reusable? Uh, yeah, there's a yes. link there. So follow that and um, yeah, do whatever you want with it. Okay. Um, easy you can answer. have a Catalan version of my one as well. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I just want to say, yeah, thank you again um, for this great talk. Thanks for being part of uh, FOSS Backstage. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. Been a pleasure. Thanks. Yeah.